Hello everyone and welcome to this video of 11th grade biology. The concept that we are doing right now is classification of different species, classification of organisms. Uh, we are currently dealing with classification under the plant kingdom and we already know there are five further types under which plants are categorized. We've already covered the first one which was algae and the second one that we are going to cover in this video is going to be bryophytes. So in the subsequent videos you can expect to see information given on the third kind of plants which is pteridophytes and then the major groups that is angiosperms and finally the fifth one is gymnosperms. So this particular video is going to focus on bryophytes which is the second subtype under plants. And before we get started, uh, don't forget this video is by Preetinder Kaur from Perfect Scores and if you want to watch more videos, you can always visit this website to have more videos and other subjects as well. And you can share and like our Facebook page as well and if you have any queries or suggestion, you can give it at perfectscores89 at gmail.com. So bryophytes, like we'll be doing in this video, will be composed of two subcategories. You have mosses and then you have liverworts. So these are the two kinds of bryophytes that we will be dealing with. To begin with, we will do a little description of how mosses and liverworts actually look like and what are the various parts. Now coming to mosses, how mosses actually look like, we are going to take example of one common moss that is funaria. So the structure of funaria is that the topmost portion, it looks like this. Now this area is called the sporophyte. In this you have two basic components. This thing over here that you can see, it is called a capsule. And the stalk-like thing that you can see over here, that is called the seta. So remember, this is the sporophyte. Beneath these seta and capsule, you have the leaves. Alright, so these leaves are there. And then you have a main axis, which is basically a little form of a root. And then you have rhizoids, which are like small branched uh, parts of this particular moss. Now the upper portion was called a sporophyte, the lower portion is called a gametophyte. Now this as I told you, this is where the leaves are, so that is the leaves. This central part is called the main axis and these are the rhizoids. So that is an example of funaria. There are some others as well. For instance, uh, sphagnum is there. In sphagnum, you just have a long stalk-like structure and then you have different branches. Right, so lots of branches are there. So that is example of sphagnum, which is also a moss. So this is known as a branch. There are basically two types of branches. Uh, the central one, they are a little more thicker. The central branches are known as the archegonial branches. It is an archegonial branch. And the topmost one, it's called the antheridial branch. That looks more like a fern, like a fern's leaf. This is called the antheridial branch. So that is one more example of a moss. We did sphagnum and we did funaria. Coming to how liverworts look like, so that it's easier for you to recognize a liverwort when you see one. So the example that we are going to take for a liverwort is going to be marchantia. And in this, we'll be seeing how the female thallus or the female body is a little different from the male body. So what happens in the female is you have this thallus kind of a structure. All right, and remember it's the female. So it's going to have little plantlets and roots from that. 
So these are called the rhizoids. And these little plantlets, these are called gemma cups. Okay, when you look at the male thallus, it's going to have the same gemma cups. And beneath those gemma cups, you are going to have the rhizoids. Now, the difference is in the kinds of spores that they have. In the female, you are going to have the structure, a flower like structure, like a sunflower, very small one, that is known as archegoniophore. Let me spell that again. Archegonio 4. Alright, so those are the correct spellings. And in case of male, you will have a similar structure, but it's a little more closed one, a smaller one. This is known as Antheridio 4. Alright, so that is the difference between a female and a male thallus in case of liverworts. Well, that's not the only information that we'll be doing in this video. So let's go ahead and discuss a little bit more about mosses and liverworts, which are basically bryophytes. Now, one thing you need to know is that bryophytes are also known as amphibians of the plant kingdom because they can live in soil, but at the same time, they are dependent on water. They need water for their sexual reproduction. And as a result, they usually occur in damp and really moist places where there's not uh, so much of dry air and not so much of sunlight. And they also are uh, quite easily found in bare rocks and soil. So you know now the difference between algae and bryophytes. Bryophytes are a little more complex than algae. Algae we did, they could either be unicellular or they could live in colonies. Now over here, the thallus is there. The body is thallus-like. It's erect. And it's attached to the substratum through rhizoids. Now these rhizoids that help in attaching them to the strata, they can either be unicellular or they can be multicellular. So that varies from species to the species. So because they have rhizoids, that means they do not have true roots, stem or leaves. So true roots, stems, or leaves are completely absent in bryophytes. That is one characteristic about bryophytes that you need to know. They can have stem-like structures, uh, leaf-like structures, root-like structures, but these are not the true organs, as you would say. Now, the main plant body is haploid. It gives out gametes, so it is called a gametophyte. because it gives out the gametes and it is haploid as well. Now, the sex organs are also multicellular. They are separate. The male sex organ is known as antheridium. And the female sex organ is known as archegonium. So, female is archegonium. So this female gametophyte, the female sex organ, it releases one single egg that gets fused with all the gametes that are released by the male. And this fusion, it takes place in the water. So if you remember, I told you water is important for their reproduction. So water is where the fusion takes place. What happens when the zygote is formed is after fusion, it's a multicellular body and on fusion, it helps to form a sporophyte. And in this case, the sporophyte is not completely free living. It is still attached to the main gametophyte and gets all its food and nourishment from that. Now, generally, bryophytes are not so important to us humans as um, economically, but some kinds of mosses, they do give or serve as food for other mammals, birds and animals. Uh, for instance, sphagnum, which is a moss, it gives peat that has been used as fuel, a component of coal. It's also used to pack uh, different kinds of living material for transshipment because they can easily hold water. 
And one more thing, mosses are the first kinds of organisms who used to colonize rocks and they are of very big ecological importance. So now we are going to do in detail about the liverworts and the mosses. Now if you remember in liverworts we did the male thallus and the female thallus and there were some specialized cup-like structures called gemmae. And this is in case of liverworts. So gemmae were there. Now they are green, they are multicellular. These are like small buds that develop in receptacles called gemma cups. And beneath them you have the rhizoids which are the false roots. Now the gemma become detached. These are the little buds. They get away from the parent body and then they germinate at some other place to form new individuals. What happens during sexual reproduction is that the male and the female sex organs are produced either on the same or on different thallus. So if it's on the different one, then let's suppose this is the female and this is the male. Or in some cases, the female and the male are present on the same main body. And then the sporophyte is there, which has three uh, different areas. That is the foot, the setter, and the capsule. So if you remember the structure, this is the capsule. This is the setter, the stalk-like thing. You have the leaves, you have the axis, and then you have the rhizoids. So we did the sporophyte and the gametophyte. So the cell division is through meiosis. And spores are produced within this capsule which is there. These spores further germinate to form free living gametophytes. So that is how the reproduction takes place in liverworts. Coming to mosses, how does everything take place in mosses? Now the predominant stage of the life cycle of a moss is gametophyte. So that is the biggest one, gametophyte. This has two stages further. The first is called a protonema stage. In this direct development exists from the spore. It is like a creeper. It's green. It has branches and lots of filaments are there. And the second stage is called the leafy stage where lots of secondary uh, buds are created and lots of upright slender axes are there. They have spirally arranged leaves. An attachment to the soil is through these rhizoids that are extremely branched and they are multicellular. In this stage, you have availability of the sex organs. Vegetative reproduction in these mosses is by fragmentation and budding is there in the secondary protonema. In sexual reproduction, the sex organs are antheridia and archegonia. Antheridia and archegonia. And after fertilization has taken place, again the zygote develops into a sporophyte, which again consists of um, a foot, a seta, and finally a capsule. The spores are formed after meiosis and uh, lots of mechanisms are there how these spores are dispersed from one place to another. And a very common example of mosses is funaria and sphagnum. So that is basically everything about uh, bryophytes. They are only of two types, liverworts and you even have mosses. So I hope this was clear. The major difference between both of them is in case of reproduction and how they look like. The features. The next group, the next subgroup that we have after bryophytes is going to be pteridophytes. So we will begin with that now. Pteridophytes contain two basic subtypes. One is horsetail and the other one is a fern. So horsetails and ferns are the two kinds of pteridophytes. They are used for a lot of medicinal purposes as soil binders and they are also used for decorative uh, ornamental purpose as well. Now according to evolution these are the first terrestrial plants who possessed the vascular tissues of xylem and phloem. So remember that it's going to be the pteridophytes. We will study about uh, these tissues in detail later in some other videos. But right now we have to focus on what are pteridophytes. Just like algae and other bryophytes, these are also found in cool, damp, moist, shady places. Now if you remember, in bryophytes, the main phase of the life was the gametophyte. 
But in pteridophytes, the main plant body is a sporophyte. Okay, so the main plant body is a sporophyte. The leaves in pteridophytes can be even small, like in Selaginella, or they can be even large, uh, for example, in case of ferns. Now, one important thing about these sporophytes is that they have sporangia. Now, these sporangia, they are further having appendages called sporophylls. Which are basically extensions of sporangia. In some cases, sporophylls may have some distinct kind of structures called strobili or even cones. For example, in uh, Silaginella. And usually, these sporangia, they do what is that they produce spores by cell division in case of meiosis in the spore mother cells. And finally, the spores that germinate and give rise to smaller but multicellular free living and usually photosynthetic gametophytes called prothallus. So let's quickly revise. The sporophyte is the dominant phase that has sporangia on top of it, and these sporangia release spores, and these spores give rise to after germination, they give rise to the prothallus. Now this prothallus is the gametophyte. Now this gametophyte needs a very damp environment and because of this the spread of living pteridophytes is limited and only to certain geographical regions. Now the gametophytes they are going to bear the male and the female sex organs. The male sex organs are known as antheridia even in this case. And the female sex organs are known as archi archigonia. Now, water is needed to transfer the anthrozoids, that is the male gametes, anthrozoids. They need water to travel and they have to go to the mouth of the archegonium. So, that is how the fusion takes place. After this fusion, a zygote is formed that produces a sporophyte that becomes the dominant phase of the next plant. Now, in majority of the pteridophytes, all spores are of a similar kind. If all spores are of a similar kind, it's called homosporous. For example, Silaginella. But if you have two different kinds of spores, it is called heterosporous. The development of the zygotes into young embryos will obviously take place within the female gametophyte because if you remember, these anthrozoids have to travel to the mouth of the archegonium and obviously the zygote will be developing inside this archegonium or the female gametophyte. Now, this event is a precursor to the seed habit that is considered an important step in evolution that there is a seed within each plant and within that seed you have another plant. Now, the pteridophytes are further classified into four classes, which we will be doing. So, we are still doing the pteridophytes. And the four kinds of classes into which we further classify them are Silopsida, the second one is Lycopsida. The third one is Sphenopsida and the fourth one is Pteropsida. But right now we'll be not going, we'll not be going into detail a lot. Uh, just remember that these four are the subtypes under pteridophytes. So that is all for pteridophytes and what we have done in this particular video is bryophytes and pteridophytes. So in the next video we are going to discuss more on gymnosperms and angiosperms. Thank you so much for watching this video.